You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's WWE Payback After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's WWE Payback After Show. This is the payback oh, pay-per-view well, after show for After Buzz. I, as always, am your benevolent hobo. I don't usually take the lead, but tonight, tonight you get to see a little more of me than you're used to seeing. And next to me is a, a special guest. Steve Kaufman. Is there the you name. go. There you go. Now you know your own name. <laughs> Good job. Should have given you a name tag. That would have helped. Look down at your shirt every once in a while. But be sure to wear it upside down. Anyway, to the show. Pretty good show. What were your thoughts on the show overall? I thought it was a really good show. I I didn't have much expectation going in, and I was very, very pleased, especially with the main event. I, I felt much the same as you. It, it sort of felt like this, this pay-per-view kind of came at a, a weird, uh, turbulent time mm. in, the, in the company, and the storylines were... We're sort of leaving things in an odd place. Definitely that, and I think it was aptly named Payback, where it's a bit of a rehashing of where we've already been. But, okay, Or yeah. rematches. Rematches would be a nicer term. <laughs> but <laughs> For me, Payback sort of has the feeling of, of wrapping up some of mm. these storylines. Do, do you feel that this show did that? Uh, with the Wyatt storyline, definitely. With the shield, not so much. It feels like we're going to get a third shield match. Felt felt like a, a door was left open. Felt like felt like we're coming back. Well, it was it was definitely an interesting Absolutely. match. Uh, but let's start from the top. From the pre-show, we had Hornswoggle versus El Torito. This is a this is a <laughs> wonderful match. I really. I'm I'm weird in the sense that when something's as advertised, I'm all about it. Where I'm like, <laughs> It's like, okay, it's... So you're, you're all about the candy bars, because you see the advertisement on commercials, and it's generally, it is what you... If, 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 it's, if it's as advertised, if it's... Okay, it's going to be right, Hornswoggle well, it was, and... It was hair versus mask, and it was hair versus mask. <laughs> two, two little guys, two big tag teams behind them. I thought it was a wonderful... Wonderful way to introduce us to Payback. Kind of felt like a dog fight to me. You see these groups of guys standing around <laughs> a ring with two little, little smaller things fighting it out. Felt like a dog fight. But in the end, El Torito actually was unmasked, but he had a mask <laughs> under his mask. That's a mill mascarous veteran move if ever I've seen it myself. And as it turned out, Hornswoggle lost and had his head shaved. I... That was as I predicted it on main event when we taped it. That's pretty Wednesday. much how I yeah, saw it, was, it myself. Was, yeah. Was whereas it, you don't ma you don't unmask a wrestler. Was was this as good as uh, let's say the the WLC match of last no, month? No, the WLC match was wonderful. Yeah, that was so. that yeah. delivered. I, I think you might be right about that. But moving into the the actual top of the show, mm -hmm. the the opening match for this pay per view event was Sheamus versus Cesaro. Oh yeah. For, um, uh, for, what was it now, the uh, Intercontinental? No, 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 the U.S. The U.S. US title. US, my mistake, U.S. championship. The U.S. title that Cesaro's already held. And um, we get Sheamus out first as yes. champion. And then you get Paul Heyman out. Paul Heyman comes out, says, I'm here to represent my advocate, yeah. my client, <laughs> and as would be expected to, in the Chicago crowd, CM Punk champ. Yeah, well, CM Punk, CM Punk, and just Heyman. makes sense. <laughs> And Heyman calls out the elephant in the room in the first segment. CM Punk's not here. <laughs> He's down the street watching the Blackhawks lose. lose. <laughs> just, like, just like the Undertaker did oh. when Brock Lesnar... Man. He just, he's, he finds that spot, man, and he sticks that poker oh, right in and he just twists it. Oh, it's just the worst. Uh, but then we, we, we get on to our mm. match. And to me, this felt like a very... Very strong matchup. These two 
two combatants who are known for hard hitting mm. didn't seem to pull any punches tonight. Oh, it was so good. We got the swing. We got we got pretty much everything. To me, it sort of seemed like Sheamus was was trying to just give all of his offense to Cesaro. Mm. He went sort of out of his way to just punish Cesaro, giving him 20 clubbing blows to the chest, just pu pushing the wind right out of his lungs. And three enormous knee drops. Mm. He just he was trying to absolutely crush Cesaro. It, it was pretty unbelievable because I'm ne I'm on and off with Sheamus tonight. I actually really enjoyed his physicality uh, and indeed. the finish. The finish I really really enjoyed. My which... gosh, that now this was a very interesting finish. Mm. This uh, Cesaro manages to pull pull the famous Cesaro mm. swing. Twenty one. Twenty one count, but. He gets his wits about him, starts to go after Seamus. Seamus grabs him. Small package. Small package desperation uh, move. One, two, three. I was flabbergasted. You do. I guess if you spin in a circle 21 times, it's really difficult to not also feel the effects. What, what, I, what I truly believe here is that Seamus did not win it. He did not mm. really cleanly win it. He barely got it out. It was a desperation move. Cesaro basically had Sheamus beat, but because of the uh, dizzying effects of the Cesaro swing, he just came and small package. Win's a win, though. Right. Win's a win, but, oh, man, you, I, I, for me, as a champion, I would not like to win like that. That is not a way to win. That's, that's a way to show that you barely got out with your title intact. Just just barely mm. hanging on. Skinny your teeth type I, of deal. I actually really like that. I actually really like that analogy, especially when it comes to Seamus. Yeah. I because more often than not you see Seamus just dominate everyone to the very end. And it can almost get very Hulk Hogan Superman y boring. Right. Although it this time it looked like Cesaro was a Superman. He took all oh. the punishment and managed to deal it back out. And still, just he didn't get the victory, but he, mm. I, I say he beat Sheamus, but he did not get the win tonight. That's a good way to put it. Well, yeah. Right, right. And uh, let's take this moment now to mm. cut to a commercial for Maria Menounos' new book, The Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness. Hey guys, Maria Menounos here, and I want to share my newest book, The Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness with you. Basically, every woman always stops me and asks me how I lost 40 pounds. So I decided to put it all in one book. Everything I did to lose 40 pounds step by step and how you can too is in here. I did it with no time, no money and no willpower and now I'm gonna show you how to do it too. You can pre-order it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Target, Walmart, wherever books are sold and it's out June 3rd. So I hope you guys love it. I hope it helps you in your weight loss journey and please, please tweet me and update me on your progress at Maria Menounos. Thanks. You know, looking at this book, I see that it's pretty much got everything. It's got workout tips. It's got a, a fancy picture of Bob Backlund. It's got food. It's got food that's taunting me. It's terrible. Ladies, listen, ladies, if you want to get a man like Cesaro or Seamus, you might want to check out this book. Get yourself into shape and see what you can do about that. Take a look on your spare time. <laughs> All right, the next match, Rhodes versus Rabexel. Mm. Now, going into this match, the, the Rhodes brothers said that this was the stadium where they first were formed as a tag team, and this is the stadium where they will be reformed. It's a very interesting uh. Uh, a challenge to put out there, and I, I don't know if they backed it up. <laughs> I, a little bit. Um, standard... Standard ride back axle, standard um, black gold road. I was about to say gold roads. I was like, that's oh, not so that's not their name. Mr. Brothers Brotherhood. Roads, the Brotherhood. Brotherhood. Um, the Rhodes brothers just didn't didn't get it done. You know what? I, what I liked about this, they they fought as a team. They mm. really did. They didn't have a moment that that really, they were disconnected. They weren't matching up. They were just, just really trying. Uh, together mm -hmm. as a unified front to beat Rybexel. And they just weren't weren't good enough just, on this it night. It just didn't happen. And Man, on any given night, you can be beaten. Mm -hmm. You really can. And then, just straight to the end of the match, Cody Rhodes grabs the microphone and says, Brother, if you want a good tag team partner, don't have me. Yeah, you, you need a better tag team partner than me. Yeah. That's 
That's rough, man. I mean, Cody Cody was on fire. He really came mm. back after his brother had received a just a ton and a half of punishment and goes for that disaster kick caught by Ryback and shell shot one, two, three. And it's it's sad to see somebody take a loss so personally. Mm. Me, I've had about a hundred thousand losses. Ooh. That's no no, it's 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 an accurate number. I okay. know it sounds pretty steep. But you can't take it personally. You gotta learn from it and I I don't think that Cody is properly focusing on what you can learn from this loss. And uh, sad to say that we are left wondering where we're going with this tag team. I, my prediction is we're probably going to see them fight each other. You really think so now? It's been I years it's, of teasing. It's been years of teasing, but I honestly think Goldust is going to say, no, you're my brother, you're my everything, we're a team, and it's eventually going to get to a, co- a point where Cody is... No, I don't want to tag with you. And if you bring it up again, I'm just going to have to prove to you. Now, how do you, how do you think that's going to come about? Do you think that they're, that they're going to try and patch things up and, and Goldust, they're going to have a match, mm. and then Cody's going to turn on him mid-match, or you're, you're, you I'm think predi- that I'm he's going to chase Cody, him? Cody's not going to want to tag with him. And then it, it's going to get to a point where Cody's going to say, listen, I'm... Listen, I'm a terrible tag team partner because I'm an amazing singles wrestler, and you have been holding me back. You think and so? I think that would be an amazing turn for him. That, actually, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but I mean, a lot of great singles wrestlers mm. are not good tag team wrestlers yeah. because they don't know how to mesh. Mm-hmm. But I feel I feel that they've been meshed. Yeah, you know, it's it's tough to say. I feel they've had a good run too. That's well, as a tag true. team. That let's let's get that payoff on them not being on them just against each other. You think there's a big payoff there? I think there's a big payoff there, but actually not right away, because I'd assume they'd be across from each other at Money in the Bank, and then that, and then it'll slow burn into maybe even SummerSlam. Yeah, that's. Uh, I would like to see that match mm. because it, it has the potential of being so good, and it's it's an instant heat match. Both these are brothers, brothers against each other. My God, in this day and age, <laughs> we've all got to hold hands and sing songs about <laughs> brotherhood. We can't be breaking it up. That'd be terrible. But I kind of look forward to it yeah. at the same time. Uh, next, we've got Lana coming out. And, of course, the ravishing Russian has some Ooh. hurtful words. She says that everybody in Russia laughs at us and that we should bow to Putin. I'm good. I'm, I'm... <laughs> You're good with bowing to Putin? No, I'm good with not bowing Communist to Putin. Communist traitor! Wow. All right. No, I'm saying I'm, I'm good with living American life as it is and not bowing to Putin. You like your McDonald's. You like I, your Burger King. I like Coca-Cola. that they exist. I've actually lost 70 pounds, so I don't do any of that. But I'm aware they exist, and I like them. Did Maria Menounos help you lose that weight? I could, I could say she did. Hobo's asking the hard-hitting questions <laughs> tonight. Well, that brings out Rusev after mm. the ravishing Russian wraps up her... R- uh, another word that Rebel starts rousing. with... Rebel rousing. There you go. I like you already. <laughs> so, Rusev comes out. He's waving his big Bulgarian flag. He's now residing in Russia. That makes sense mm. to me. Which, of course, brings out Big E with his American flag. Mm. And there's some flag waving and some questionable wondering about what this actually means, all oh. this flag waving and big sticks and what. <laughs> it, it means patriotism. Yes, what? certainly. You're, you're right. I've... <laughs> I've certainly got my mind on the gutter. It's patriotism tonight. Uh, we we start off this match in, in, in the way that I wanted to see this feud actually happen. Because these guys are of similar size mm. and weight, they collide in the ring. Ooh. Hard. It's great to see. I, I like I like this matchup. I haven't seen... I've been watching a lot of NXT. I mm. do the NXT after show. And I, I know Rusev very well, and he hasn't had an opponent to match him like this, like Big E could. Yeah. So I was very happy to see these two finally butt heads. Such a good match. Um, every, t- every time we get to a match, I always think of the last spot, and I was like, you should think of other, <laughs> you should think of other spots. Before There's you more of a match this. than the finish. But, but more or less, this was a, a fairly short match, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Not much going on, but uh, let's see. Rusev gets a, the the better part of this whole exchange with a big German suplex. Oh, just dropping, Love that German suplex. Just dropping Big E on the back of his head. I'm, I'm surprised at the height with which mm. he was able to pop those hips and get them, but that's, that just shows the strength of Rusev. I mean, neither of these guys can be counted out. And then you've got uh, 
Big E coming back with an STO out of mm. the corner, managing to break free of Rusev's grip, and then a spear, a flying diving spear through the ropes. That's the one I wanted to bring up, that it was just... That was fantastic. No net, no tables, no nothing, straight to the floor. Brutal. Ugh. I, I don't know if I'd want to take that. I, I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. And then eventually it just sort of breaks down. Rusev managed to, to get off a super kick mm. when Biggie's revving up for that big splash, and then it's the accolade, and I didn't know Biggie could stretch that far. Oh. Holy crap. Good That's for just... Rusev, though, because this is, this is Rusev's biggest... Biggest win biggest since, victory, yeah. since being on the main roster. So this, and this means a lot for for it to be Big E. It's sort well, it's sort of questionable. A lot of people are saying that Rusev has torn through the African American section of this Ooh. company like some sort of hellified tornado. Ooh, what? I'm not saying I, it. I, I mean, I, I just, other others have said it. Others unaware. have said it, and I unfortunately I have to scratch my head and agree. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what this means, but so far he's beaten pretty much every African American, with the exception of Darren Young, JTG, and uh, oh, who else? Uh, King Booker, but he's not active. No, he's not um, active. I'm talking about active. Well, in any well, case, well. he's he's just he's brutal. I don't know quite why he's sort of aimed himself in that direction, but he seems like a tank just rolling over everything in his path. I I, I wonder what's next for for this uh, Bulgarian brute. Um, Sheamus. It's going to be Sheamus. Sheamus? I'm just making bold predictions. I Back it up, <laughs> sir. Sheamus is the U.S. champion. Okay. He's been in the U.S. long enough that I think, because anyone who goes up against the Bulgarian Brute has to be able to get the USA champ. So I think Sheamus has been in the company long enough and is the U.S. champion that we're all going to forget that he's Irish and just USA. Yeah, and yep. that would be... Seamus would be another powerhouse to go against Rusev to make him look. That's that's saying something. Saying that a um, an Irishman of his pale color has been <laughs> accepted as largely as corned beef is quite a <laughs> statement. I would actually I would like to see that. That I makes mean, sense. Rusev and Lana going after the U.S. title, trying to take the United and States and then he's as gonna a whole. Call it the Russian, t you know. Oh, that can be. And then they sort of change the belt, change the colors, oh, yeah. blue and white or, or red or something like and that. The, Boy, that would that'd be kind of cool. Mm. <laughs> I like that. I haven't seen a and different a, sort of shade on that title in a, a long and a video time. game and a video game controller and uh, oh yeah, and it's just yeah, just go all the way. Everything, belts. everything's just Russian. Changing yes. belts, yeah. Fantastic, great idea. Tetris. Next match was uh, a bit of a surprise for mm. us tonight. We had Kofi Kingston versus Bo Dallas. Oh, that got set up on the pre-show. Right, right. I had heard, but that, uh, I was I was still surprised. I'm not quite sure. I I like. I like what they've set up there that you can have Kofi Kingston tweet something and then it can become an actual match. Because he tweeted against the authority, Stephanie McMahon, I Stephanie see. McMahon namely, and then in the pre-show they're like, breaking news, you, you, have a match, you have a match with Bo Dallas. That's an interesting thing. It's, it's making uh, Twitter an actual physical yeah. entity, something that actually creates something is worth something yeah, that, it's it's, more than words. It's something you're actually, something you're reading could mean things on television that you're watching. That's different. I, yeah. I guess it means you, you have to pay more attention to mm -hmm. the things that your superstars are tweeting mm -hmm. than you did previously because they actually could matter yeah. in the grand scheme of things, which is very interesting. So we get uh, Bo Dallas and Kofi Kingston. Now, I got to ask you because everybody's talking about it. What are your thoughts on Bo Dallas? I love Bo Dallas yeah, as, really. as just this bumbling bad guy, Kurt Angle, Simon Dean, just he think he honestly thinks everyone he's helping everyone. That's yep. and I love it. You've got it. You've got it. A lot of people don't quite get this character, mm. but this is a guy who you don't know you should hate, but you should hate him. Oh, yeah. You definitely should hate him. I love hating him. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> you're, you're a right good fan. Boo him loudly. Tell him to bow and leave. Oh, I'm from Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do more than tell him. <laughs> Please, no hand gestures. There are small children. So we get this match. Kofi looks confused at Bo Dallas because he just tweeted something, and now it's become a thing, and mm. he's still confused, as are most of the fans as to Bo Dallas. But you should hate him. Just trust us. You should hate him. Bo Dallas comes out and says that the Blackhawks are going to lose tonight. Which they have. But, well, have they now? They have. Uh, Sorry. this broadcast? As of this moment. 
Sorry, everybody. Sorry. Well, by the <laughs> but, time... But Boat House has good news for you. <laughs> you are not a loser because your Blackhawks have lost. All you have to do is believe. I believe. Do you believe? This morning I woke up and I was like, I believe I can do anything. I believe I can host the Payback After Show. And here I am. My God, Bo Dallas has definitely worked in mysterious ways even tonight on this show. I know. Beautiful, brilliant, I love it. Now we got, all of a sudden, the pyro hits Kane's out. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting this, though. With the way this whole thing was set up, I sort of should have yeah. seen it coming. And uh, it looks as though Bo and Kofi were, were a united front as Kane's walking oh, yeah. down the ramp. Both of them are looking like they're about to give hell mm. to the big monster. And then Bo promptly leaves. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. It absolutely does. Kane decimates Kofi. Although the, the curious part I noticed before, before any decimation occurred, the ref was in on this whole thing. Oh, yeah. Because... The ring bell sounds as Kane gets in the ring. So this, there was no match with Bo Dallas. Yeah. I have to imagine that even Bo himself was in on this to a degree, but that's that's something I, I'm saying without having any proof. I don't know, Bo strikes me as the kind of person who tends to relish in not knowing. That there, <laughs> there's a really good chance Bo had no idea. Well, that's uh, just sort of sort of blind old world. Yeah, he, he lives, is in... lives in his own head. I, I could see that. Yeah. yeah, I could definitely see that. Uh, it's just a choke slam and a tombstone, mm. and Kofi gets the one, two, three. As Bo Dallas looks on, <laughs> and then Bo grabs a microphone, <laughs> comes in the ring, and says that, hey, it's okay, Kofi, you'll be back on your feet in no time. Oh. All you have to do is <laughs> believe. Yeah, that, that was a great help. Do you think Bo Kofi's going to believe? <laughs> I think, I think, uh. I don't know what to think, quite frankly. I don't know. Do you think this might lead to uh, a tiff between Kofi and, and Bo? I hope so. That would be a nice long-standing tiff. Because Kofi Kingston very much stand your ground, stand your ground, fight your own battles, and Bo Dallas very much believe in me. <laughs> just believe in an outer-worldly thing where Kofi Kingston's one of those, just, no. Never just, mind what I say, just trust me. Yeah, Never just, mind what I do, just trust my words. Yes. That I am, I am great. I am the greatest. Don't you worry about that. Oh, boy. But Bo Dallas, I gotta say. On to the next match. Mm. This is this was sort of a surprise match for me, although I'm sad to say it really shouldn't have been. Mm -hmm. It's Rob Van Dam versus oh, yes. Bad News Barrett. Rob Van Dam's always a solid competitor. Even had his his age, which Bad News uh, sort of yeah. played at in his opening promo. What was your thoughts on the match? I thought it was a great match. It's a standard Rob Van Dam comes out, and I think Rob Van Dam is best when you only see him four out of the 12 months of the year. It's interesting. Because, because his moves are so unique from anything else you ever see that if you see him in such spurts, that it's like, oh, yeah, that's amazing. I've never seen stu stuff like that. But the charm sort of wears off after more than a month? Yeah, well, and I think partly because, partly because they don't give him much of a character and much of a, much of a competitive edge. Like, he doesn't, aside from fighting for a title he's already held, that's about the extent, that's about, a, about the extent he goes. Yeah, I, I can sort of see that. that. It's just well, kinda, I mean, would you like to see more of him? I would like to see more of Rob Van Dam in a main event. In a main event picture. Like a, maybe a title picture or Just something like, like that? Just like the world title picture, so, you know, money in the bank. He, he can be, it's possible. If you have him go for possible. things he's done, he's had already, let's, let's have him go money in the bank. That's a, that's a good point. Yeah, I would like to see him mm -hmm. win money in the bank. Well, we're not there yet. Oh, no, of course. So, we got Bad News Barrett out the gate. He says that he is going he's going to stop Rob Van Dam mm. from receiving any more paychecks, and he is going to put... Old Yeller down hmm. and uh, put him on a permanent summer vacation. He's not that old. He's <laughs> really not. And I, I feel that Barrett wrote a check with his mouth that his, his butt certainly couldn't catch. Oh, cash. no. And uh, it, was, it was a pretty, pretty spirited match right mm. off the bat. You got a lot of strikes coming from both competitors trying to outdo one another. And the crowd seemed thoroughly split. Mm. You got a lot of cheering for bad news well, and a lot of cheering for RVD. Similar to anyone who cheers Bo Dallas, they're cheering him ironically. Like, Are they really? Do you think they're really cheering Bad News Bear 
uh, ironically. In this case, they're cheering him because they like him more than just the bland that you're getting with RVD. But in general, he could come out and trash your city and half the crowd will still cheer for him, ironically. I, um, I like that he bashed my city. I don't know if it's ironic. I think it's one of those things that they, they respect his wit. His yeah. wit and his delivery sort of uh, just are mm -hmm. one of those things that you have to say, yeah, he's good. He got me. I, mm -hmm. I can't deny that. He totally nailed our, my city, my whatever. Because he's, yeah. he's smart. He's funny. But he's got this mean streak. And I think... I think more people than not have a mean streak yeah. that they can connect with him with, mm -hmm. you know? I'm excited he's finally on it. He's finally on a path with a character that's just making sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah. He's, he's gotten a great push from the JBL and Cole show. Oh, yeah. really believe in this whole thing, and he himself has, has just embodied this whole mm -hmm. idea, and he's really he's made money with it all yeah. the way. He's the Intercontinental Champion. What more can be said about mm -hmm. that? And in this match, he, he really had a hell of a match. Uh, there's, uh, like I said, a lot of back and forth, a lot of striking until Van Dam takes over and th just throws Barrett over the barricade, mm. right into the crowd. Kind of a, a, a ballsy move. I mean, I, the, the WWE has no interaction with fans like that. Oh yeah, I, it's, I, very, I was very surprised, very surprised indeed. And then he follows it up with one of those great Van Dam moves, one of those. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't do that type of move. <laughs> so it was a the jumping spin kick from from the apron oh, to yeah. the barricade and Oof. just nailed him. He had a little trouble getting up after that. Mom, of course, of course. <laughs> I, wouldn't we all? I, I I like Rob. I've seen Rob Van Dam in big arenas and in bingo halls. Same level. Like every match to him is this this size of just. I'm just gonna you've, go you've balls be, to the wall. Got to be the best you can be oh, at yeah. all times, no matter the crowd. I. I respect that idea. And then, uh, let's see. We got, uh, ah, B Bad News Barrett takes back over. He catches uh, Rob Van Dam on an up and over and gives him a big old kick to the stomach. Just, mm. I heard this thing oh. was just, yeah, he heard the bread basket just turn <laughs> over. Brutal, brutal. And then an elbow to the outside. And then uh, Van Dam starts coming back up. You get this, one of his patented moves, the step over spin kick. Oh, yeah. But this spin kick had a little bit more velocity than any other spin kick I had seen before. Mm. Did you catch what happened? Oh, yeah. Caught him right in the eye. I mean, oh. his whole toe in his eye socket. He, I, I can't wait to see what he looks like <laughs> tomorrow. Man, he was grabbing that eye. He couldn't see him, which made this whole comeback really, really <laughs> believable as Van Dam was popping him around like a ping pong ball. <laughs> And uh, it was great to see him get back up and some of the great stuff. He got the rolling thunder in there. And uh, he got the split leg moonsault, but mm. he got him with the knees. Barrett got him with the knees, man. Hit the bull hammer. That was it. Oh, yeah. What do you think I, of that? Was this a championship caliber match? Oh, this match was a championship you? caliber match. It, it, was every, it had everything. Because the key with me, and I'm a bit jaded when it comes to watching a match, my it takes a lot in a match like this for me to suspend disbelief and go, no, Rob Van Dam might win. Rob really? Van Dam could do this. And you, you, and you have trouble suspending said disbelief. Depending on the match. There were a lot of matches tonight I had no trouble. Okay. This, match, this match I had issues where I was like, well, Rob Van Dam doesn't need to hold a belt at all unless it's a bigger one than he's ever held. Now, see, I felt differently. I felt that he... he really had something to prove because mm. of his limited contract that everyone was saying he can't possibly hold a belt. For for him to win a belt would be quiet all those naysayers. Yeah. So I, I thought that was that was sort of my internal uh, reasoning to say that maybe and, he could pull this out. And that would, sh that would show a big commitment to him. Right. For him to get a belt. Of course. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all a matter of yeah. dollars and cents and things like that. And, Truly, he does have nothing to prove. Yeah. It's just, it, to me, it shows real heart that he, he keeps fighting the way he does. Mm -hmm. He never he never backs down. He is 100, 110% in that ring every night of the week. You really got to respect it. And now uh, let's move on. We've got Stephanie McMahon out. We're going to do this whole Daniel Bryan thing. Put it to bed. I'm, Where's the belt going? I'm happy it's right here and right now. I'm very happy this is, any, this is nowhere near the main event. Because I would have been very upset if this was the if this were the end of the night. 
I, I think I, too, would have uh, been upset because while, while this whole segment did end on a positive note, mm-hmm. uh, it, it really didn't make any. It wouldn't, it, was, have had, it wouldn't have made any sense being anywhere but in the middle. Yeah, ex- yeah. exactly where it should be. So to start this off, Stephanie McMahon comes out and s- s- thanks the crowd for such a warm welcome. Oh, uh, yes. Some sort of phantom warm welcome. It was chilly as a <laughs> winter's night in Chicago in that <laughs> arena. And uh, she says that the right thing here would for Daniel Bryan to surrender the title, to give everybody else a, a fighting champion who could go on to deliver caliber matches. Which is a, actually a fair point. I mean, yes, it is. It, to, a, to a degree, yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Just on the outset, it's a fair point, but I think it's her job as a leader to just take that charge. Right. As a, as a promoter and a business person, you, you really do need a mm-hmm. champion that you can show off. Mm-hmm. Somebody you can actually say, this is our champion, yeah. look at him fight. Yeah. And for Daniel Bryan to be on the shelf sort of hurts that, but with the crowd behind him, the way that they are, I, I think it would it would behoove her to listen. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And uh, she, this during this whole thing, she sort of sounded like a uh, host of a game show. Like, <laughs> Let's make a deal. It's your wife or your belt. <laughs> sort of some, some horrible game show in my <laughs> it's opinion. It's a terrible Russian game show. <laughs> <laughs> Russian, really? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty Russian. <laughs> now, Russian comedies end in suicide, so yeah, that's pretty Russian. You get one wife. <laughs> This is for you. You get success or you get wife or you get out. <laughs> and uh, Brian comes out. Stephanie talks to Brian and says this is actually all his fault. <laughs> References some sort of bearded baby that he and, he oh, and yeah. Bree may have down the road. And that this is actually selfish of him. Of course. Uh, well, it's of course. It, uh, of course speaking he would speaking of things that could have been handled by a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> like pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, this was basically a live she could have Twitter said this, war. She could have said this Monday, and then he could have tweeted Tuesday morning. Um, um, no, <laughs> no, thank. Um, f- fire her. <laughs> well, I mean, it's. Uh, are you married? I'm not. I'm married. Got if it. my wife's not happy, my life ain't right. That's it. Fair enough. So, yeah, I yeah. totally understand where he's coming from. And yes, hobos can have wives. I just, say. just so you not you them, I, them I know them, they're quite <laughs> they're quite funny in their way. So uh, then Brian, of course, uh, doesn't doesn't do it, man. Yeah, he just <laughs> says no. Like he just, but it's it's more than he says no. He's he's willing to. He's willing and ready. He's got the belt in hand. He's ready to hand it over. His wife steps in the way in front of this bus that's headed toward. Poverty, basically, mm-hmm. because he's making all the money. And let's face it, the money he's making is way more than the money she's making. So for her to sort of step in and say, take my job, isn't really that big a sacrifice for her. Yeah. I mean, while, while I'm sure it's important to chase your own your own dreams and your own ambition of, uh, of winning the championship mm-hmm. belt, the Divas title, this is kind of a no-brainer if you're looking at dollars and cents. Mm. Although, although, would she lose her job on WWE television and Total Divas or just WWE television? Because that would make Total Divas really awesome if she was just traveling with the girls for it's, no it's reason. Actually, I don't, I don't know if anyone's thought that far ahead. I, 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 I don't know. That was actually pretty brilliant. <laughs> Is she going to lose all her jobs or just one job? I also, I also my, my thought on this would be that... Um, Nikki Bella would come out and get fired. <laughs> and then Brie would keep her job. <laughs> Do the old twin switcheroo. It really doesn't work anymore. It since, really doesn't. Just but... a body modification <laughs> of one of them sort of negates the whole yeah. thing. But then Brie Bella quits. She doesn't get fired. She doesn't throw herself mm. uh, basically on the mercy of Stephanie McMahon. She takes the card away that mm. Stephanie McMahon is holding. A, actually, a brilliant kind of screw you oh, move. Yeah. I, I really, I gotta and give it to her, man. It was wonderful, and then they even milked that moment longer than longer than I felt. Like they milked the moment long enough where I was like, "Why, why is she still in the ring?" <laughs> and then, psh, slap the taste out of her mouth. Bam! They played it back in slow motion, uh-huh. and it was all the sweeter. <laughs> and Stephanie <laughs> didn't know what to do. What, what what can she do? She literally has all of the power taken away in this mm-hmm. situation by the woman that she's got basically strapped across this block and is ready to bring down the sword. 
she took the steward away. Yeah. <laughs> and then got hit in the face. <laughs> and then ran away, probably to cry. Also tell her husband. Well. Uh, where, where do we think this is going to go? Um, well, I think it depends on how healthy Daniel Bryan is. Because if Daniel Bryan can't be ready by June 29th, which is the next pay-per-view, then there's going to be two Money in the Bank ladder matches. The second one's going to be for the belt. And maybe Daniel Bryan will be in that match. Maybe he won't. But that's my prediction, that you're going to have your six top people, and both belts are going to be up. And then you're going to have another six people fighting for a briefcase. Now, if both belts are on the line, would, would do you think somebody... Uh, we'd have two winners, one taking each belt, and God, then another, another unification match. God, I hope not. It would be kind I, of like cha a dog chasing his own tail. Pretty much, that, that would be really, really silly. It would be kind of silly. That, which is why we're not ruling it out. Right, well, <laughs> Thank you. that's kind of... Stranger things have happened. That's kind of a disparaging backhanded <laughs> comment. <laughs> that's a terrible idea. Don't count it out. <laughs> Well, let's all hope that Daniel Bryan is feeling better. Yes. And that this whole thing sort of works itself out and he manages to retain his championship at the next pay-per-view. Now we move on to arguably, eh, arguably uh, the match of the night. Yeah. Arguably. I, I was shocked to see this this early in the card. Yeah, I, I, I was... suppose so. I mean, although the last, the last three matches. Well, they were all great, you know. Right. They were good. I felt I, mean, I felt this match and then the Shield match were like co-main events of the night. Right, and then you so. have the the women's match in between, uh, and we'll get to that. Right, right, but it's yeah. yeah I think it's a, it's a great way to set it up. Uh -huh. You set up with the the last man standing oh, yeah. match. You go to the women's match, something totally different. Yeah. Then you go to the no holds barred again, totally different. So you have sort of a a point yeah. of recuperation in between. Yeah, it's very smart. Uh, your thoughts on this match overall? Bray versus Cena, last man standing. Such a good match. Like, so physical. They made they made complete use of the no holds barred. They made complete... No, last man standing. Well, but the idea of... Well... The idea of there being no rules that... Because the first thing I heard when I heard this match was like, well, but if there's no DQ, it's really just three people against Cena. And I think we've all made our voices clear of how we feel when Cena just defeats three people. <laughs> So we just. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> why don't you give them some help? And then you have the Usos, and we've been building that up for a while. Right. So then it's a one on one match with a two on two match happening yeah. on the outskirts, right, right. giving it's, you a lot to follow, a lot it, to. It becomes something far more complex. And I want you to see something. I actually took an entire page worth of notes just on this match. It was. It was an exercise in, in understanding the psychology of two men who hate each other as, mm. as well as. The, those that revolve around oh, those yeah. two, because you have your main two mm -hmm. being Cena and, and Bray, and then you've got Harper and Rowan, and then the Usos on the outside of this. Now, how they sort of intermingle becomes the very interesting part. Um, but this match, as itself, was a great exercise in the wrestling principle of escalation. Mm. It is one man does something, and the other man does something bigger, and then it just builds until basically they they drive each other off mm -hmm. a cliff to their death. <laughs> we didn't quite get that far. We got close. But we, we did get one man standing and one man not standing at all. Although I didn't we didn't I didn't get a good look. He could have been standing in that box. Well, uh, I guess it could be a magic box, it's, a Mary Poppins bag think, sort of situation. Well, Bray, Bray Wyatt, it was actually Schrodinger's cat in that scenario. Because he was both standing and sitting at the same time. Can one stand and sit at the same time? Well, he exists in a quantum. There are two realities from that point. <laughs> There's we, one we, reality where Bray Wyatt is standing in the box, and there's another reality where Bray Wyatt is laying in the box. You're explaining, like, crazy stuff to me. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I think we've gone from the parallel universe of professional wrestling to an entirely paralleler universe, one which I can't well, follow you to. But we're living in the multiverse where John Cena won. <laughs> and... I guess let's let's keep it to this <laughs> this verse we, we're, right we're, here. We're in this one it right now. It makes things way we're all right. way more simple because we don't have to talk about things that may or may not have happened in other universes <laughs> through the wormhole. 
In any case, we got Bray out first. And I noticed at, uh, at this particular time that there were a lot of lights in the arena, and, they, and the oh, announced was... team uh, tried to explain it as cell phones. No, that looked like you. That looked like they they gave them lights. They looked like LEDs the, to me. Those lights looked way brighter than cell phone lights. Absolutely, that, yeah. And they all were burnt. They were all burning at the exact same brightness. Right. So they either changed. They either changed something in the camera, or more than likely, they just paid two dollars a head and gave them all lights. Now, why do you think they would uh, give people? Uh, the people who support Bray Wyatt uh, more of a, uh, a chance to vocalize their feelings about their beloved insane mm. leader. It, it's a way to show how many people he's turned in his story of John Cena is a superhero, but that's not the way the world works. The world works the way I'm telling you, and you should follow me. And that's essentially been his game for three match for this entire program. Okay. And what I like about this program is that is that they found a way to tap into the people who just like John Cena. It's like, no, he's John Cena. I like that character. I'm blindly behind him. Blindly? And blindly. Well, I'm on the other side of I feel there's a bit more development to be had with John Cena that hasn't happened. Okay. All right. That's and, I, I'm, and that's why I dislike... I dislike elements and situations he winds up in where it's like, oh, he's just going to overcome the odds. And that gets very stagnant stagnant and boring, and there's a group of us that just dislike that. And this angle found a way to talk to both of us. Okay, so do you feel that by, by allowing uh, Bray Wyatt fans to be seen, mm -hmm. that that is, uh, that is somehow actually giving Cena something to overcome? Absolutely. Okay, all right, I can see that. Yeah. That, that makes some sense. I'm, I'm, I'm for it. So, of course, the start of this match, it, it starts out looking mm -hmm. like Cena against all three oh, yes. of the Wyatt family, which uh, I was glad to see didn't happen. <laughs> the Usos came out, backed up Cena. I was happy to see yeah. that. These, these Uso boys, they're good boys. They're real good boys. They're real yeah. good boys. Their daddy taught them well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like that very I've, much. I've always wondered if one of the Usos and uh, Roman Reigns ever headbutted each other, if there'd be, like, a second Big Bang. So, okay, you're, like, like m much the way uh, mating goats do it on the mountainside. Very simple, but I would imagine a Samoan's head is h harder than a mating goat's um, horns. Okay. So I think it would be so cataclysmic it would start a, a some sort of bang. some sort of Dragon Ball Z type effect yes, would, would go much. into play there. Very interesting. Uh, let's see if we can't get them to do it. Yes. But that's that's for another time. So we we begin the one upsmanship here. We the, the both men are striking each other sort of mm -hmm. sort of equally, but but just one the next just a little bit more, just a little bit more. And then uh, <laughs> Bray starts to take over. Does his his dancing? <laughs> Such a head game to be to be had there. Oh. So it's, it's it's very interesting to see him dancing. I mean, does it does it have a creep factor for you? Yes, and I enjoy it so much that the fact that I'm behind Bray is actually really weird. That it's like, oh, now he's dancing with him. He's just controlling him. He's controlling every like. He's got the whole world in yeah, his hands. Just, <laughs> so it's, it's my my favorite storyline this year, and I'm aware this year is not long. Br Bray Wyatt makes makes you feel mm -hmm. uh, something he does for me personally. He makes me feel. He is the embodiment of an idea and a full fledged embodiment mm -hmm. at that, and he, he makes me feel things, which I find very powerful, especially in this. In this it's very important to square. So mm -hmm. make people feel. So we we get John Cena fighting back a little bit. We got little. Little bits of, of uh, bursts of fire from John Cena being trying to be pushed down mm -hmm. by Bray Wyatt and controlled, and John Cena manages to come back, top rope famouser, boom, lands big too. Bray mm. Wyatt's down, but uh, we we see suddenly all of a sudden that uh, uh, trip. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not used to talking this much. I'm not much of a host. I'm usually the color man. <laughs> sort of, I have to do both tonight. That's weird. All right, so we've got John Cena picks up picks up. Uh, Wyatt, yeah. for the AA, counters, Sister Abigail, out of nowhere, just like... Just right there. Like a, like a gunshot. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, Cena's down, manages to get up, of course. we I wouldn't ever count yeah. him down that quick. I, what I didn't see coming with this match was how far things did go. Mm. 
uh, we saw a Friday night was a last man standing match. It was very contained. Yeah. Very contained. This one exploded. It went everywhere. Everything happened. So then we've got, uh, ooh, hmm. yes. This, I've, <laughs> like I said, this I've got quite page full of notes. Yeah. Page of notes here. I'm trying to decipher in my head. I'm seeing the match. Uh, then we've got. Uh, seen uh, back up at eight. Goes for another AA. Bray. Uh, wow, I can't even read that. It's like chicken scratch. In any case, <laughs> the Usos, Harper and Rowan, collide in the middle of the oh, ring. Yeah. And ex uh, another explosion. Finally, all th all six of these men are in the ring at the same time. I I wasn't sure to what level their involvement would be in this match. Were you satisfied with what you saw Absolute, tonight? Absolutely, I was very satisfied with. Everyone getting in the... It seemed like a three-on-three -three match. It, did it really? It, it felt like a three-on-three -three match that one ideal was going against another ideal. That it was... One team was going against another team. Do you think in, it was it was an equal... It was equal parts of the three-on-three -three and equal parts one-on-one? -on -one, yeah. Or was the one-on-one -on -one taking more? I think it was equal parts three-on-three, -three, equal parts one-on-one. -on -one. Really? It was just a lot going on. I, there were there were very memorable follow. very yeah. memorable things that happened uh, in this particular part of the match with uh, the Usos and the Wyatts. Uh, they then they they sort of fall apart. Bray comes back with a chair. He's he's beating Cena with a chair. Cena gets the chair. Mm. He's beating Bray with the <laughs> chair. Cena gets a gets a uh, sets up a table. But then Bray tosses him with this vertical, uh, vertical slam. It's oh, not, it's not a suplex because he doesn't go down with him. It's just a toss. Oh yeah. When I see that move, I all I can think in my head is Bray Wyatt's going screw you and just <laughs> dropping him right on his dome. It's a, it's a heck of a thing to see. Then uh, that Bray gets the stairs, mm. and then John gets the stairs, and then completely chucks them <laughs> out of the ring at Bray Wyatt. <laughs> I've I've never seen anything oh, like that. Oh, it's just a projectile stare. I, I've never seen anybody throw him that far <laughs> before. Was... I guess he got a running start, but just wow. How... And, I, and I've heard those stairs actually are, are yeah. as heavy as they look. Those That's... are not pretend. Those I'm sure. I'm real. sure those stairs are twenty to forty pounds, and oh. he just. John just... Cena is also that strong. No, oh, yeah, he, like... he really is. That's that's no joke, man. But then Cena starts to <laughs> break gets up after that. How? I'm not quite <laughs> sure. That really defied the odds. That was the shot of the night from this match. Mm. And everything else was was hard hitting. That hit the hardest. It was brutal. Cena jumps down to uh, give Bray something, but Bray snaps another Abigail oh, on him. That was beautiful. Bam! I, out of nowhere. This is another one of those moves, much like the RKO, that can be hit mm. at a moment's notice when you are not paying attention. John then throws Bray into the post. Bray <laughs> then somehow and just brutally gives a back body drop to Cena on the stairs, mm. follows that up with a senton. Off of the stairs. Ooh. I, shades, of, shades of Husky Harris there <laughs> with the running senton. I, I don't care who it's shades of. Yeah. That's, that's shades of, of red that would be flowing through my eyes from all the blood <laughs> gushing out of them as I've been squished like some sort of <laughs> go-gurt. Speaking of which, I think it's around this point where Bray Wyatt is bleeding on it was after the the, the yeah. chair or the uh, stair shot. The stairs thrown somehow opened up his elbow because he probably took it. He probably well, blocked I mean, he, it a little with his hand. Right, and something about it just just oh. caught and tore a small just... hole in his elbow. Is definitely a, a juicy affair. Then uh, we get John Cena coming back with an AA on the floor. Then Harper and Rowan hop in on Cena, beating him senselessly. They pull Bray to his feet at the last possible second to make sure. Mm to make damn sure that he does not get counted out of this match. Yeah. He, they want him to win because basically their entire way of life is tied into him winning. It's, it's, it's a scary yeah. thing to think that two people can be compelled like these two are, mm -hmm. especially as, as large and imposing as they are. Uh, then we have some, some interplay. The Usos are back on their feet, and they're beating up Harper and Rowan, something terrible. They bring out the tables. One of the Usos, I know there's a way to tell the difference. I can't. Can you? I figured it out last week, and then 
then they changed last week one of them was wearing a green wristband and one wasn't but that's not the case any i couldn't I couldn't can't, figure them out that and can't tell. especially how fast this match was tonight very it was very really fast difficult paced, very fast paced uh rowan's beginning to set up a table but but then one of the usos super kicks him and gives him that bump bump through the mm. table taking both of them out harper then goes up and superplexes the other through two tables <laughs> I don't think that he uh, landed quite where he wanted to. I think he Harper no. got a little more floor <laughs> than he did table, but that just sort of goes to the the nature of these two's mind. Oh yeah, scary stuff. Mm. Scary stuff. They don't care. It's devil may care with their buddies. Mm. Scary, very scary. Uh, let me get uh, and brace back up onto his feet. He's managed. They, the announcers at this time were screaming that. Bray had been down past the count of 10, but the referee was, was just yeah. too taken with the, the goings-on around him to make the count. But Bray's back up, gives a low cross body to Cena through the barricade. Oh, I love this. Bray Wyatt is a man who is able to explode on a moment's notice. Mm. It's, it's quite uh, With little quite regard something. for his body. That yes. It, his, everything, everything he's about is more important than, eh, I might get a little hurt. <laughs> like a little hurt flying through a barricade. He seems to me uh, sort of like a, a Mick Foley, but with a with a better physique, better better yeah. physical physical ability than Mick Foley, but with the same sort of look and yeah. attitude. With Mick Foley oh, is yeah. one of my favorites. So oh, I'm glad too. to see something like that. You know, I always like guys who are just a little bit mm -hmm. off, like me, much like me. I, um, I don't see that at all. Really? Not at all. I like you. I knew I liked you. All right, then we got Bray and Cena brawling to the back to one of the one of the the booths in no, the back yeah, there. So there was an explosion. They got into <laughs> some of the the power boards or something. Something blew up. So I got somebody <laughs> came in from another room. What was that? It was just it was just on the TV. Don't even worry about it. Then hmm. all of a sudden they're up on this elevated platform. Cena throws Bray through this this box, this container. Mm -hmm. What what would you call it? I think. A container, I'm pretty sure that's where all those wires and and things, you would load them up into that container and then put yeah. that container in a truck. So right. and I'm then, sure there's a more important word for right, it. Right, right. I'll be damned if I know it. And then yeah. Cena grabs another one and puts it on top, uh, and Bray is unable to lift it before the count of ten. Wow. And Just wow. Great match. We're in the multiverse where Bray was laying. Just yes. specifying. Right, because he <laughs> lost. And Cena won. Yeah. Which actually I I didn't foresee. Me either. I really thought they were going to continue this feud. Uh, after this particular loss, do you do you think this is the end of the feud? I felt like tonight was gonna be the end of the feud either way. I just thought um I guess I just thought that Cena can withstand that loss. That That seems to be the story of this feud mm -hmm. is all of us sort of standing around, thinking to ourselves, you know who should win? Bray Wyatt. Yeah. And then he never does. Yeah. And uh, we're not necessarily disappointed. We're just, because the matches are great. Yeah. The matches then... are really good. Uh, but we, we're still not getting necessarily what we want or what we feel would make things more productive. But I think we're getting what we need. Because in all of these matches, in all of these matches, um, John Cena winning doesn't necessarily mean that Bray Wyatt's ideals or ide or anything about Bray Wyatt and what Bray Wyatt stands for changes. I think that's what's important. And that's what I love about Bray Wyatt is he can he can go forever without ever winning. He doesn't need Do you, to. You don't think that... that um, I thought he should have tonight. Right, but you don't feel that him losing takes away some of his, his power. No, because he can always come out and say, look at what John Cena had to do to overcome everything I'm about. But he, he tries to be this boogeyman type figure, mm -hmm. this, this larger than life. Uh, not the actual boogeyman. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a boogeyman figure. Yes. But, uh, but more real, which yeah. actually is more frightening. Yes. Uh, but it, 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 he loses so often. Do you think that, that he is anything to be afraid of? Because he loses, because he can be overcome, does that take mm. away his power? No, because his he's not overcome. He just loses matches. 
Because John Cena had to go to a really dark place to beat him tonight. He had to lock him in a box. Like, a, like an animal. That's, what, that's where John Cena had to go to beat this man. So John Cena, in, a, in essence, kind of lost. Okay. And, like, and that's, I think that's the story they'll start telling. Most, mostly because Bray, Bray was not left incapable of standing, but he was forced yeah. to, to sort of give up because of his inability mm -hmm. to escape the situation that, that John had set him in. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Do, 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 would we like to see this go to SummerSlam, this feud? I'm not, I think we could give it a rest. You think we're done? I think, I think we're done for now. I think it can come back. Okay. I think I think SummerSlam would be too soon, but I'm foaming at the mouth to see why it's shield. Again. Well, but in a in a bigger scale. Okay. Just a much bigger scale of that ideal versus this ideal in a big money match with no interference. What what do you think the why Wyatt Shield could do that has not been done already if if they do go in that direction? Uh well they'll fight all over the crowd. They'll probably end up outside. Um they just, th that match will go everywhere. Um they'll run roughshed through everyone else. You just want to you just want to see it go go crazy. That's just that's burn the place towards. to the ground kind of kind of nuts. Cuz they're both 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 factions in their own way are complete anarchists of this i suppose you're right i mean yeah i i, I guess you're right shield in its way mm -hmm. is is sort of uh, controlled anarchy yeah. and justice being whatever they make it and the wyatts are very regimented mm -hmm. uh us versus the world yeah. type type of ideal that if you're not with us we're gonna make it anarchy yeah because you're not with us and I would love to see that match. Okay. Like and that it, big match. But that needs... I think SummerSlam would be too soon. I think that would be a really good Survivor Series match. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Survivor Series setting. I, that definitely could be good. All mm. right. If not yeah. sh if not Shield, who do you think the Wyatts are going to take on next? Hmm. I'd like to see Bray go for, the, go for Money in the Bank. Okay. And then maybe even with Rowett and Harper in the Money in the Bank match just to help him. Really? Like, that would be an interesting... Basically, it would be three on three for would... the money in the bank. Or three... It would be the Wyatts versus three. Right. So I it mean, would be, yeah, it would be yeah, it them would be... versus... Well, I mean, three, it, would... it would sort of div dissolve after that, but anybody who comes against the Wyatts, they have to unite or they will die. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely how it is, and we definitely saw that tonight. Uh, although Cena got the victory, it was not a clean victory by no. any, any means. On to the next match. And this, too, was hmm. good in its way. It was Alicia Fox versus Paige. Uh, thoughts on the match overall? Uh, the match overall was a really good, quick women's match. Um, everyone always talks about bath like the women's match being the bathroom break match. This is a wonderful match. They're both great competitors. I take issue with how Paige is presented on television and has been since she got there. Okay. S since she got called up from NXT. Okay. And you've seen her on NXT where she... I, I do know her very well. Pretty much ran roughhead through everybody. Yeah. It was just this dominant 20-year-old force. 20, who's been wrestling. 21. God. 20, just, to be one, 21 and double champion. And then the second she... Like, from go, she comes out. She comes out and... I'm just here to, to say thank... Just congratulations, AJ. And then AJ being a dastardly heel ring the bell, and then AJ beats down on her for 30 seconds. And then small package, she wins. No, no, it wasn't a small package. It was, it was a page turner. It was a, oh, it was a clean finish. It was a clean, but you know what I mean? That it was out of nowhere. And, for, and I thought, well, okay, well, that'll make AJ look strong. And then she'll start running roughshed through the Divas division. No, every match you see, every match you see Paige in, match after match, it's four or five minutes of the other person, and then... A quick turn, and then and that's what this match was too. And I, I take issue with that. I think Paige is better. I think Paige is better than be, than how she's being presented. Uh, do you think it has is anything to do with her being new and the audience as a whole being unfamiliar with her? Yeah, but I don't. I just feel like there would have been an easier way to bring her in. That maybe she could have ran roughshed and then took the title. I don't know. I just I feel like it's not the page I wanted. 
Right. But right. Uh, that's sad. I, mean, I, I think they're trying to have her maintain a, a likable quality, mm -hmm. uh, fighting as an underdog, which is always the story, the good story to tell. Yeah. You always want to see an underdog mm -hmm. victory. And I think that's what we're getting from Paige, especially with this Alicia Fox match. Now, Alicia Fox recently has, has turned and her antics are, are uh, it's... weird, at <laughs> least. Uh, what do you think of uh, at least the new, improved, question mark, Alicia Fox? I think it's interesting. I'm really curious where we're headed. Where we're headed with the new and improved Alicia Fox. Is she going to just bug out every time? Is she going to be like a diva in the Aretha Franklin sense of the word? I would, okay. I would hope. I have never heard of that phrase. Well, in like, the Aretha Franklin sense of the word. Of a diva like somebody who's like a prima donna and. Is Aretha Franklin a prima donna? Well, a diva in the. It's a known term. <laughs> It's not known to me. It's a, it's Aretha a known... Franklin is an American gem. She sang the national anthem of WrestleMania number, which escapes me. <laughs> but like backstage, but backstage, there have been stories of her and a lot of popular female singers like her that they're very hard to work with. And a deep, that's where the word diva was before WWE took it. So I thought, I think it would be really funny if Alicia Fox were, became the ultimate diva yeah, and yeah. was just, I'm not going to come out unless they play my music right. Okay. The, the hairstylist right. didn't do my hair right. I'm not even going to do this. Like, I think I think that's where we're headed. We, or she's just a crazy person. One more question. Do you like that I got you on the spot there for a second? I loved it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> on with the match. Paige looked aggressive pretty much in every way. Mm. She out-wrestled Alicia Fox. She outstruck Alicia Fox. And she slammed, out-slammed Alicia Fox in all ways. Mm. Gave her a suplex from the outside to the inside. Clean as, as anything. I think this gave us a, a good look, us knowing who she is, mm. and the rest of the crowd a good look at the caliber of opponent that, that Paige really is. Mm -hmm. This is what we expect. This is what we've come to truly expect from Paige. We got a little taste of that tonight before Alicia Fox sort of went all weird again <laughs> and managed to take over. It was kind of, kind of, kind of different. Mm. Uh, uh, Fox sort of took advantage of Paige at a moment, and then Paige started to come back, and then Fox grabbed Paige off of the stairs and whipped her down to the floor. <laughs> Brutal move. Yeah. But then it, Alicia Fox sort of doesn't take advantage of that uh, that moment where she's got her opponent down. She sort of does this, this strange antics <laughs> mid match. She doesn't know where she is. What her her performance in this match to me truly made it look like she already thought that she had the belt. Yeah, she was fighting like a defending champion yeah. because she was making her opponent look foolish. She was not even caring if they were outside or inside because you can't win a belt if you're on the outside no. and you get counted out. That yeah. is not how this works. Mm -hmm. You got to really know where you are, take advantage of certain situations. She didn't do that. She didn't care. I don't think she wanted to win the belt tonight. I think you're right. I think she thought she won the belt already. That yeah. she, she just thinks everything. This character, I think, if this character comes into view the way I think it is, she just thinks she's the biggest deal there. I, she certainly seems to, and and she. I also think she's part Native American, because she's got crazy talk like nobody I can <laughs> ever I can ever remember right about now. You like that joke? Oh, that's a good joke. That's, that's... thank you, thank you. Thought of that myself. I'm not I'm not the best <laughs> at the jokes. She who talks crazy. Yes, yes, that's yes. it. And then you see Alicia giving very aggressive holds, very aggressive slams, her, mm. her tilt-a-whirl back breakers and uh, bows and arrows, things like that. Very brutal, grabbing the nose. just just And then just picking up Paige at one point and <laughs> throwing her the heck out of the ring. Again, if your opponent gets counted out, you don't get the belt. Mm. And I just didn't seem to grasp that, and I think the match sort of lost its believability because of that. I mean, did, yeah. you, did you believe that? Alicia Fox could win the belt tonight. No. Not no. at all? No. Nor did the, uh, I saw some sports books. That was probably the, Paige winning the night was probably the biggest favorite of the night. Really? That everyone knew, like it was like one, I think like one 80th or something. I mean, Silly. There was a few, of, a few of us that thought with the way that Fox is going, she's been very hotly talked about that she might actually take it. Uh, but, but upon seeing this match and the way it, played out it just 
did not yeah. did not hold any water. And uh, mm -hmm. Paige comes back, manages to knock Alicia Fox around a little bit, locks on that scorpion cross lock. That's all she wrote, baby. Yeah. You got nothing but to tap out. You literally can't even crawl to the ropes unless you have some sort of frog tongue <laughs> that can reach out to the ropes for you. No, man, you're you're done. Oh, that it was over. And then Fox sort of does some more crazy talking and then runs away. <laughs> We're seeing a lot of two two heel ladies run away tonight. I don't know where they go. I think they. Did they go to the heel lady locker room? Is it this? Uh, Rudos and Technicos, the Technical locker yes. room? Yes. It's, it's possible. Yeah. Maybe they're both crying in the shower together. I'm sure you all are enjoying I... that visual at home. Oh, now we're going to check the comments later. <laughs> hey, they, they know me on the comments. <laughs> now on to the main event for the night. Was this the main event in, in your opinion? Was, did it have that main event feel? It definitely had a main event feel. I felt Bray Wyatt Cena was the main event. Okay. It seems as though we may have to breeze through this quite a bit. But uh, it was it was a wild match. It literally went everywhere. It was mm -hmm. much like the, the Wyatt Shield match that you want to see in the future. Yeah. We had that oh, we have. match tonight with Evolution and the Shield. Uh, it, was, it just exploded right out of the gate. Everybody slugging everybody, going all over the place. Then we managed to come back to the ring at, some, at one point. Shield now is firmly in the driver's seat. They've taken over. And they're just, they're sort of working all over mm -hmm. evolution, making them look much like the old men that they kind of are yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> and I went into this match, my prediction was Shield. The reason being that I remembered back when, when DX came back to win the tag titles, they did it over the hottest tag team at the time, who were Miz and Morrison. Yeah. And when I, when I declared that I'm pretty sure Evolution was going to win, I was citing that as a reference. But I prefer this. Yeah, this was, this was different. It's... This was not just some sort of we, we win match. This was, this was oscillating back and oh, forth it... 100% in either direction. You really had no clue where yeah. it was, was going to go. Two teams both gave each other their absolute all, and one team was just better. Yes, better in every way, partially because they're younger. And No, I think it was the message they were trying to send. It was, this match really saw punishment. Mm -hmm. It saw Evolution attempting to punish S.H.I.E.L.D. and put them in their place. There was yeah. even a public flogging yeah. in the middle of this match. <laughs> they straddled Roman Reigns across those stairs and just beat him with kendo sticks until he was a funny color. <laughs> it was, I've, I've not seen a flogging like that in, in several years. Like that, the brutality in this match was something different. Even Triple H hitting uh, Seth Rollins with a freaking flat screen TV, which that made was a, wonderful. it sound like a gunshot. <laughs> Everyone was going, What just happened? <laughs> well, commentary kept saying, like, We didn't know what that was. <laughs> what? For, like, there, was like, there was like two minutes where it was like, Well, he, he threw something at him. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what that was. I know a, a flat screen TV <laughs> yeah, when was I a... see one, mostly because I saw dollar signs just flying <laughs> out of Triple H's pocket. I guess you can just use a TV because you're the boss. Mm -hmm. Nobody else is allowed to, go to use the good TVs. Everyone else has got to use yeah. a monitor. That's about, what, 25 years old? Now, there was, there was a very obvious uh, something that stood out in this match that I think we, f we feel we need to address, possibly at this juncture. Blue Tista. Hashtag Blue Tista. Everyone else comes to this match wearing black. Everyone. <laughs> he comes out wearing bright blue. Why? Is that Guardians of the Galaxy? No. No, okay, it's not. Green and red. Got it. Then, yeah, he's just trying to be different. Hopefully, because we, we're going to have him one more month. Maybe we're building up to a Triple H Batista. Maybe we're building up to a Randy Orton Batista. We're building up to a shield imploding again. I'm okay with either. And that's a good part of it that just, but yeah, Blue Batista. Blue Batista Blue tonight. Blue Batista. Well, uh, this, this match was madness it went everywhere and the members of evolution were just sort of working very soundly on the ground and then members of shield would mm. fly in <laughs> occasionally and attack them like fighter jets <laughs> it was it was <laughs> incredible and then they they go up to the the top of the ramp and and take uh take rollins and beat him and then take uh ambrose mm. and ddt oh, him it's... into the dirt and it's it's just 
the brutality in this. I mean, this is one of those matches, if you've been a wrestling fan for a long time, you're expecting blood. There mm. should have been blood. Ten years ago, there would have been blood in this Absolutely. match. Absolutely. A lot yeah. of it. Everybody would have been oh, yeah. freaking bleeding <laughs> everywhere. But then no falls. There are no falls for maybe... 75% of this match, yeah. maybe even more. When, and all of us are sort of holding our breath going, who's first? Who's, <laughs> who's going to be first in this? And then that's, that's the message. Evolution wanted to punish. They did not want this to end. And by beating them, they would have had the punishment end. They didn't want that. They wanted mm. this whole thing to play out and be as brutal as possible. But that got them in the end. Because in succession, you had Roman Reigns spearing Batista, the first fall. Then you had... Ambrose hitting the dirty deeds on Orton onto mm. a chair. That's Ooh. the second fall. Rollins flies in. Reigns hits a spear on Triple H. Oof. That's the the third in a row. It's it's Shield standing up completely 100% victorious, and Evolution looking like schmoes. Yeah. I I, I wow. I I did not see that coming. Not Me not in the least. I, yeah, not even a little. I was flabbergasted at the idea of not only not only that a shield victory but a clean sweep of a shield victory clean like the cleanest that you wouldn't you wouldn't eliminate like i thought for sure like okay well maybe seth rollins probably right i mean i i thought maybe batista out first maybe ambrose out yeah, first. yeah. you know i thought it was going to be that like that would be cool classical and back and forth ambrose gets out first you get the other two you know right that is, we got something completely different, a whole, yeah. whole different kind of animal. I mean, where do you think it goes from here? After this sort of victory, where? Where could you possibly go? After this, I want to see Evolution implode and to get the most money out of Batista. So you have Batista in what will presumably be his last two pay-per-views go on and go on and have a big money match with either Randy Orton or Batista or maybe even a Brock Lesnar and make as much money on him as you can before he has to go do press in August for that movie. Do you think Batista, pardon me, mm. can beat Bootista? Can <laughs> the fans actually accept Dave Batista as being the good guy that they tried like hell to give us when he came in? I think if he grabbed the microphone tomorrow night and said, you know what, Hunter, you know what, Randy? I came in here, you told me, just come in, win the Royal Rumble, they'll love you. They don't love me. Oh, come on, you know, come on, just win the title. They'll love you. They, they love Daniel Bryan. I, I keep, oh, we're going to redo Evolution. They'll love it. They'll love it. You won't get hurt. We'll just destroy these guys. Nothing is working for me. All I wanted to do is come in here, win the top, you know, just to have big money matches and move on. And... Do Just, you think that's enough, though? Because the fans saw that. They yeah. literally saw that. He came in literally to make money and leave. Yeah. Do you think they'll accept him just looking them in the eye and telling them the truth about that matter? At this point, yes. Because there, he has nothing else to say. Do you think they'll, the people or, will forgive him? Or they'll boo him harder, but in a real way. In a respected way. I don't know. It's tough yeah. to say. I think maybe... Do you think that teaming with Daniel Bryan could put Batista on the level? That that finally, that would be the one thing. The endorsement from Daniel Bryan would be the one thing to turn Batista face at this juncture. That could, but that would take some time. And I don't think they have it with him. I, really? They only have two, maybe three shows with him. Because I, they're probably going to have Money in the Bank and then SummerSlam. That's what right. they're going to get with Batista because he's going to have to do press for a movie. Right in the first week in August, so pretty much the last weeks of July. So you don't think there's enough time to build yeah. something with a, 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 a Daniel Bryan and Batista mm -hmm. alliance? No, I don't. Well, yeah. it's kind of unfortunate. I, 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 I scratch my head, wonder where we're going. Where are we going to go next? Tomorrow night is Raw. Mm. And uh, gosh, <laughs> I sort of look forward to it. After Me this, too, yeah. After the surprise pay-per-view. Really, nobody thought this was going to do much. It managed to break out. Yeah, you really you got to respect the surprise pay-per-views last year. This was a surprise this year. It's been a surprise as well. And it's been it's been a heck of a thing calling yeah. this. Uh, <laughs> it's been this, a surprise that we're here. It was an emotional <laughs> experience watching the pay-per-view and an emotional experience getting here tonight. And uh, for those at home that would like to know more about you, mm. follow you. Where can they find you? You can follow me at Steve Kaufman. That's like Andy Kaufman with one more N. <laughs> like Andy Kaufman with one more N. Wrestling fans can respect that. 
And you can follow me on Twitter at True Hobo, buy a swanky shirt on ProWrestlingTees.com, and go to YouTube.com slash SoapboxCarTV to watch our channel. I don't know why I stumbled over that, because I am the Pitchell Pro Wrestling Champion, as you can plainly see. And I want to thank you all for joining us this evening. I am the Hobo, and this is Steve, and we're saying goodnight. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz. I need a nap. Buzz, you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later. <laughs>